If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We can begin by drawing an incline with a uniform solid sphere rolling down it. So here we have the ball rolling down the ramp and to the left. We have defined the leftward direction as negative and the rightward direction as positive. And what we want to do next is label the forces that are acting on this sphere as it's rolling down the ramp. Let's put the center of mass of this uniform sphere right in the geometrical center of it. And then we would have the gravitational force pulling down on the sphere, and we can label that Fg. We have the normal force pushing up on the sphere, and we can label that Fn. And then we have a static frictional force that's pointing up the ramp. So we can place that force right here. Now we'll notice that because Fg and Fn are passing through the center of the sphere, that they will not produce any torque. Remember that any forces that pass through the center of rotation of an object produce no torque. Fs, however, will produce torque. So we can actually come over here and write a Newton's second law in terms of torque, where we have the net torque is equal to the rotational inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. Now, the static frictional force, again, is the only force that's producing torque. And we know that that torque will be equal to the force, Fs, multiplied by the radius of this sphere. Now, we also know that angular acceleration is equal to a radius multiplied now we're going to want to come up with an expression for this angular acceleration. We recall that the acceleration about the center of mass of an object is equal to its angular acceleration times its radius. What's a little bit tricky in this question is that the acceleration about the center of mass is actually a negative quantity. And we know that because the sphere is accelerating in the negative direction down the ramp. The Angular acceleration, however, is actually a positive quantity, because if we look at this sphere, we can see that it's rotating in a counterclockwise fashion, and counterclockwise is a positive value. So we just have to keep that in mind. What we want to do is solve this for alpha. So if we divide both sides by the radius r, we have the acceleration about the center of mass over r is equal to alpha. But again, that acceleration about the center of mass is a negative quantity, so we just stick a negative sign on there. So we'll substitute this expression for the angular acceleration into our net torque equation. Next, we can divide both sides of this equation by r, so that we'll isolate the static frictional force. On the right-hand side, we're going to end up with r squared in the denominator because of that division. And this is a result that we're going to hold on to for just a moment. We want to go back to our free body diagram, and what we want to do next is, instead of looking at the net torque, is to look at the net force in the x direction. And that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration about the center of mass. Now the net force in the x direction contains the static frictional force, which is pointing upward in the positive direction. But then there's also the horizontal component of gravity. If we recall, whenever we have an object on a ramp, the horizontal component of gravity is equal to the gravitational force times the, excuse me, times the sine of whatever the angle of incline is. And that's a result that we've developed in previous questions, previous chapters. So that horizontal component of gravity is pointing down the ramp and is therefore negative, and then we can write that force into our net force equation. We'll take the expression that we developed for the static frictional force and substitute it into our Newton's second law equation. Now we want to solve this equation for the acceleration about the center of mass. And so what we'll do is add the fg sine theta over to the right and subtract the m times acceleration to the left. We can next factor out the acceleration about the center of mass. And that's going to leave us with the following. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. That way this changes to positive and positive and then the right side becomes negative. We'll then divide the bracketed term over to the right-hand side. Notice that we switch the order of the m and the i over r squared term. Conveniently, we can replace fg with mg. And then finally, we'll divide each term 
in the numerator and denominator by the mass m. That way, when we divide this by m, we're going to end up with just 1. Dividing this term by m gives us m in the denominator, and then the m here will cancel. So this would be the final expression for the acceleration about the center of mass. We want that acceleration to have a value of 0.1g, so we're going to substitute that in for the acceleration about the center of mass. And in fact, that acceleration has to be negative since the object is accelerating down the ramp. We can see then that a negative sign on the left and right will cancel, as will the g's. We're essentially dividing both sides of the equation by g. We can next go ahead and multiply both sides by this term here in the denominator so that it moves over to the left. We will next look up the value for the rotational inertia of a uniform solid sphere. There should be a table in the textbook that gives such values. And it turns out for a uniform solid sphere, the rotational inertia is 2 fifths times mr squared. And that's convenient because then the mr squares actually cancel out. We can then pick up our calculators, add 1 plus 2 fifths, and then multiply by 0.10. And when we do that, we should get 0.14. And then when we take the inverse sign of both sides, we get an angle of approximately 8.0 degrees. And so this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. For part B, it's relatively straightforward because if we had a frictionless block sliding down the ramp rather than rolling down the ramp, then this static frictional force would no longer be present and so we could actually remove it from our free body diagram. Well, without that opposing static frictional force, we would see, therefore, the object would accelerate at a greater rate down the ramp. We don't have that static frictional force working against the object, essentially. So it would end up having a larger acceleration. So the correct answer would be more than for part B.